Thank you so much for being here. I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And the first thing I'd like to do is acknowledge the art that's behind us and these representations of solidarity and resilience that are the animating spirit for what we are here today to announce and celebrate. Um, thank you also to everyone standing here with us. What we are announcing today, the California versus Hate initiative is the product of literally hundreds of people coming together um, to strategize, to think, and to create something really unique in our state's history. We have community leaders and organizers. We have our artists. We have dedicated public servants, my colleagues at the Civil Rights Department, Secretary Castro Ramirez and her colleagues from the Business Consumer Services and Housing Agency, the first partner in Governor Newsom, and of course, our partners from the legislature. Here it is. Today, we are proud to an announce the official launch of California versus Hate. For the first time, woo! for the first time in our state's history, we have a statewide hotline dedicated to helping individuals and communities report acts of hate and identify options for next steps. This initiative is run through the California Civil Rights Department, but it expands on efforts at the local level and among different communities in the state, including LA versus Hayden. We have a representative here from that program today. It expands on these efforts to address hate across our state. So this tool connects people who have experienced hate anywhere in California with culturally competent resources that are separate from the criminal legal system. This is a direct response to the recent disturbing rise in reports of hate-fueled violence across the country and across our state. Reported hate crimes in California are at their highest level in more than two decades, their highest level since 2001, and they jumped almost 33% from 2020 to 2021. We also know that these numbers are not the complete picture. Many people do not report when they experience an act of hate. This can be for many reasons, including out of distrust of government or fear. Too many hate incidents fly under the radar even if they are reported because our state and national statistics aren't built to track them. That's because law enforcement reports numbers of incidents that rise to the level of a crime. But many acts of hate might not be crimes. They might violate other laws, or they might violate no law, but they still result in trauma and pain. I also want to recognize that while this hotline is a response to what we're seeing today, hate is not new, and everybody here can testify to that. It's something that too many of our communities have confronted since before the founding of our state. Whether it is massacres and forced labor of indigenous people, whether it's the trafficking of enslaved African Americans, anti-Chinese violence during the gold rush and after, or forced deportations in the 1930s of people perceived to be Mexican, including US citizens, our history is full of examples of these types of events. But our history is also full of examples of people and communities coming together in solidarity and in mutual support. What we are doing today partakes of that part of our history. We are coming together to take a stand, to strengthen our ability to combat hate through more reporting, more resources, and better data. So here's how you do it. If you or someone you know has been targeted, you can call the hotline at 833-866-4283. That's 833-8-NO-HATE. You can call Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific and get assistance immediately from trained care coordinators in over 200 languages. If you call outside those languages, uh, outside those hours, you can still get support from the hotline through 211, and you'll be called back by a California versus hate care coordinator with follow up. You can also report online at cavshate.org 
and you can report in more than 15 languages. This is a safe reporting mechanism for victims and witnesses. You give us as much information as you feel comfortable sharing, and yet you can report anonymously. It is not an emergency hotline, so if people experience immediate danger, or if you want to report immediately to law enforcement, go ahead and call 911. This is work that we have all done together, everyone that you see uh, here and many hundreds of people who are not here. Please help us continue to do this work by sharing the materials that we have. They're part of a multilingual outreach campaign that is launching today, and they're also available on our resource hub online. We are united in creating a California for everyone where people are safe and where people thrive. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jenny Leung with the Chinese Culture Center of San Francisco to share more about the artwork behind me. Jenny. Thank you, Kevin. My name is Jenny Leung. I'm the executive director of the Chinese Culture Center of San Francisco. And just this past February, these flags of artwork that you see beside me march hundreds of thousands in the San Francisco's Chinese New Year Parade. And we are so proud to be part of the California Civil Rights Department California Versus Hate launch today. This project is called How I Keep Looking Up, a cross-racial multilingual solidarity art project um, between the Latinx and Chinese communities Christine Wong Yap, the artist, brought 16 women, immigrant working class women, to share their stories about resilience, power, and their immigration journeys. And these are stories that share about our common ground, and they are stories that represent our struggles, our hopes, and dreams, and collective joy. And when we come together to build communities through mutual understanding and art, this is what stopping hate looks like. And art is a powerful, powerful tool to prevent hate, and our essential stories to community, well-being, health, and belonging. And for 50 years, CCC and other community arts and co community organizations have been part of that. And I want to give a huge shout out to the women who came from San Francisco's Mission, Chinatown, immigrant communities who are representing here today, Marcella, Lupita, Selena, Yuan Yuan, Hoi, Wesley, Annie, we're bringing our immigrant communities to the steps of Sacramento. Please give them a round of applause. And now I'd like to turn it over to Assembly Member Mira Tucci. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank the California Civil Rights Department, uh, working together with the legislature Los Angeles County, I think I saw Robin Toma here somewhere. Stop AAPI hate and numerous local community-based organizations representing California's diversity for making this California versus hate initiative happen. I also want to give a special shout out to former assembly member David Chu, who joint authored Assembly Bill 557 with me. as well as Assemblymember Phil Ting, our budget chair, who agreed to put our bill in the budget to make sure that this initiative was funded. We all saw how incidents of hate targeting Asian Americans dramatically spiked, not only in California, but across the country during the pandemic. And as my colleagues here in the legislature worked to fight back, we quickly saw that this pandemic of hate was not only targeting Asians, but so many other communities here in California. Black and brown, LGBTQ, Jewish, Muslim, indigenous peoples, all seeing similar spikes in hate incidents. In response, 
The state is launching this California versus hate initiative, a statewide reporting and support network that the California Civil Rights Department is working in partnership with local community-based organizations to track data on hate incidents, provide support for victims, and make all of our communities safer. We know that this community-based approach is necessary because hate crimes and hate incidents target entire communities, not just individual victims. We know that despite their community-wide impact, most hate crimes and hate incidents are never reported. And so that's why this online reporting system combined with a toll-free hotline will it allow victims and witnesses to report a hate incident in a safe and anonymous manner, particularly those who may face language or cultural barriers or are undocumented. With this initiative, California is going to lead in the nationwide fight against hate. And I look forward, along with all of my colleagues from the legislature here, to continue to be part of this fight. So it's now my great pleasure to introduce the next speaker, the president and CEO of the Trans Latino Coalition and vice chair of the California Commission on the State of Hate, Bambi Salcedo. Buenos dias a todos y a todas y gracias por estar aquí. Uh, gracias a Dios por un día más de vida. Um, thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, thank you for your beautiful presence. Um, and thank you so much to the Civil Rights Department uh, for inviting me to, um, to speak here with all of you. Um, I also wanna give a shout out to my fellow commissioners, uh, Chair Roybal and uh, Commissioner Cuellar, who um, I believe are in the audience. You know, as a trans woman who is a survivor of a hate crime and who has had the ability to overcome my trauma and access uh, support from people who have uplifted me throughout time, um, I'm really you know, lucky that I get to be here and that I get to share my story with all of you. Um, but I think it's also important that um, there is a lot of work that still needs to be done. And this is a great first step to ensure that all Californias across our beautiful state uh, get the support that they need through this um, amazing initiative, California versus Hate. I wish I had this resource when I, uh, when I was a victim of the hate crime that I experienced. Uh, but I, it just fills me with so much comfort that, I, that there's this resource uh, available for other members of my community who continue to be attacked, who continue to be diminished, who continue to be devalued simply because of who we are and because of our existence. And so I want to command, um, you know, the legislators and all the lawmakers that made this uh, possible, that there's resources. Um, but again, you know, there's more that needs to be done. Um, we need to ensure that those of us who uh, experience hate crime uh, or hate incidents continue to be supported the way that we need to be supported. Um, it's important for us to um, recognize that you know, trauma is real in our lives and there's resources that need to happen there. There's, you know, resources for housing and other different things. Uh, but particularly law enforcement, I think law enforcement has a huge role in this and we need to work together to ensure that law enforcement also understand uh, what needs to happen in order for all of us to eliminate uh, the hate that we all experience. Uh, so, Thank you again so much for this amazing and beautiful campaign. I know that through this campaign, uh, we're going to be able to change minds and hearts 
And through that, we're going to be able to change the hate that we all experience in our society. Thank you, California versus hate. And thank you, all the legislators that made all of this happen. Thank you. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce um, one of our beautiful and amazing uh, social warrior, um, who is the president and CEO of the Black Youth Leadership, uh, Lorreen Pryor. Thank you so very much uh, for that beautiful introduction as the previous speaker stated. My name is Laureen Pryor and on behalf of Black Youth Leadership Project, I can say that Team BYLP is appreciative of the opportunity to collaborate with state and community leaders to address the various hate incidents in California, particularly those directed at individuals in the Black community. BYLP has continued to remain active, specifically in the education space, fielding complaints of racial bias and disproportionate discipline rates of Black children. We have continued to walk with families through the educational system and provide support and advocacy needed to restore the child. We have created an outlet for students to voice their opinions and concerns um, through our educational podcast called Black versus the Board of Education. You can find us on Mondays at 4.30 live on YouTube and Facebook or on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, thanks to our Be Heard podcast family. The feedback from Black students and families that we have received um, from our podcast influenced our decision to create the GOAT prep program, which is goals, organization, autonomy, and trajectory, as well as our PSIs, which are the public school interventions and supports. Because our youth express they don't have adequate representation on school campuses to safely report numerous incidents of anti-Black racism and bias. Youth are not the only ones affected by toxic educational environments. We have supported numerous staff who are targeted in their hostile work environment, prompting us to create our Black Educators Support Network. Through Beeson, we support staff dealing with discrimination, hate, bias, and the inadequate attention given to their concerns or cries for help. Bias and discrimination are forms of hate that we cannot fix if we don't acknowledge them. According to the Hate in California report released by Attorney General Bonta, reported hate crime events involving a racial bias overall increased 33.1 percent from 875 in 2020 to 1,165 in 2021. Anti-Black or African-American bias events rose from 456 in 2020 to 513 in 2021, an increase of 12.5%, continuing the trend of Black Californians being identified as the most targeted ethnic group. BYLP is committed to working with the Civil Rights Department, local and state officials, and community leaders to address long-standing anti-Black racism and the subsequent lack of response from law enforcement. We will continue to uplift Black youth, families, and community members as we navigate through daily acts of anti-Black bias, discrimination, and harassment. For over 20 years, BYLP, has and will continue to support, advocate, and insulate Black youth when, attempt to, when the others attempt to diminish their American right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You too can join this effort by visiting C-A-V-S-H-A-T-E or CaliforniaVersusHate.org where there are many resources available for you to share with your friendly, your friends, and colleagues. If we work together, we can make a California, we can make California a state where all people feel safe and comfortable calling it home. Thank you. Please welcome Secretary Lourdes M. Castro Ramirez. Muy buenos dias. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lorene. Um, thank you also to members of the B 
business, consumer services, and housing agency that are here uh, today. Especially a special recognition to Undersecretary Melinda Grant, who's here in the back. Thank you also to the Civil Rights uh, Department staff, uh, Becky uh, and Kevin and Adam and everyone that comprises the Civil Rights Department. Thank you for your labor of love. Thank you for continuing to guard the civil rights of all Californians. I also want to acknowledge that we have members of the legislature with us. Thank you all so much for joining us for this day. Today, yes. Today, as we launch the California versus Hate Resource Line and Network, we unequivocally say there is no home, there is no place for hate in California. Do you all agree? Yeah. Hate is destructive. It tears apart people and destroys communities. Hate dehumanizes. It prevents us from seeing ourselves and others. And hate hinders opportunity. These things are the exact opposite of the California dream. In California, we honor and we respect our people and our histories. We embrace diversity and inclusion. We take pride in our individuality and our uniqueness, and we create and open doors to opportunity. So when we see hate, we must do all that we can to put an end to it. The California versus Hate Initiative doubles down on California's commitment to do this by dedicating resources and dedicating more support and also raising the level of awareness. We would not be here without the historic investment by my boss, Governor Gavin Newsom and the legislature. Their leadership and commitment to combating hate in California has been unwavering. We especially thank Assembly, Mer Assembly Member Marasucci. Thank you so much for being a co-sponsor of this bill. We appreciate your partnership. As the governor has said many times, California is great because of its diversity, not in spite of it, and this endeavor this launch of this hotline and this launch of additional resources embodies that maxim. Diversity, equity, and inclusion have been key pillars of every effort that the governor and this administration has undertaken. So it was only natural that he and the legislature work together to expand resources for the California versus hate effort. But this is not just a state government effort, as you can see all around us, right? It takes collaboration. It takes building trusting relationships with community-based organizations. And so we thank you all for being our partners and for working in your communities uh, to eradicate and to address hate in your communities. Because of our, uh, because really our most powerful tool in this effort is all of us, all of us working together, all of us building trust, lifting up our voices, rejecting hate, and instead continuing to build an inclusive California, one that embraces the rich diversity of our people, one that enforces civil rights protection, one that invests in the strong relationships that we have among our people and communities. The resource line will be here to support people that have experienced hate, providing culturally and linguistically competent uh, informed services, trauma-informed support as needed uh, to uh, individuals that are seeking that level of assistance. As the nation's largest, let me say this again, the nation's largest state civil rights agency, the California Civil Rights Department, under the leadership of Director Kevin Kish, and with its many dedicated staff, is uniquely positioned to assist with resources, to provide uh, resources ranging from mental health services, legal services, assistance, to housing and mediators. They will be partnering with a network of organizations that will make that connection for individuals that are tapping this hotline. I'll say it again, there is no room, there's no home for hate in California. 
Now, uh, just, yes, that deserves a clap. Y ahora quisiera uh, este, brevemente compartir unas palabras en español uh, porque pienso que es muy importante uh, lle llegar este mensaje uh, a todos los, uh, los californianos que hablan uh, la lengua en español. Hoy declaramos de manera clara que no hay lugar ni espacio para el odio en California. En California valoramos la diversidad y la inclusión. Como ya, ya lo ha dicho el gobernador muchas veces, California se destaca por su diversidad, no a pesar de su diversidad. Así que cuando vemos odio contra nuestro prójimo, debemos hacer todo lo posible para combatirlo y erradicarlo. Bajo el liderazgo del gobernador Newsom, la iniciativa California vs. Hate o California contra el odio redobla el compromiso de California en esta lucha por medio de la red de recursos y apoyo. Si usted ha sido víctima de algún ataque de uh, odio o violencia, por favor, uh, le, le suplicamos que uh, use el recurso que estamos promoviendo hoy. It takes all of us working together. Um, and so I ask also to help us get the word out, get the word out to community so that people know that they have a place to turn when they experience hate and when they're in need of support. I know that we can count on everyone here to continue working together because together we can make California a more inclusive and safer place for all. Thank you very much for being here today to help us celebrate this launch. And now it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce a woman who is not afraid to use her voice, a woman who is not afraid to stand up to hate, a woman that champions diversity and equity and inclusion. She is an award-winning filmmaker and is leading several efforts to elevate the importance of partnerships to address the challenges that California faces. She's also a mother and she is the first partner of California. Please help me in welcoming Jennifer Siebel Newsom. Viva California! Si, si! Gracias, Lourdes. Lourdes, thank you for your leadership. Lourdes and I had the incredible opportunity to go to the Museum of Tolerance yesterday with the governor and all of the cabinet secretaries. And it was very interesting, the timing of all of this. I highly recommend you all visit if you haven't. Everyone in this state, in this country, must visit the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles. There's a lot to be learned. Um, history cannot repeat itself. And today's event is, um, California stepping forward and making sure that we don't repeat our mistakes, our historic mistakes. So the governor and I are incredibly proud uh, to live and raise our children in a state that stands up to racism, misogyny, homophobia, xenophobia, and all forms of hate. Acknowledging the unjust and daily reality of vulnerable and marginalized Californians is the only way to right the historic injustices and create a California where all of our dreams are possible, where we all belong. Because as we've heard today, hate crimes have been on the rise from anti-Semitic messages spray painted on driveways and in front of homes to the assault on transgender women to Asian women stabbed in public to just in the past few years, a black man repeatedly run over by his neighbor, a neighbor who previously vandalized his car with racial slurs. Any attempt at ignoring the common thread of bigotry that runs through all of these incidents is ignorance that will only allow them to persist. And that is why I'm so proud that the governor and the legislature and the entire administration have refused to turn a blind eye instead passing legislation to crack down on hate crimes and protect targeted communities. The California versus Hate Initiative is part of that plan and yet a very impactful way that California is leading with our values to ensure that all Californians feel safe and heard. 
And in doing so, California will model allyship and what is possible when we all commit to seeing the humanity in one another and eradicating hate before it further proliferates. And while government is responsible for caring and creating and enforcing the policies that will keep our community safe, of course we cannot do it alone. It's all about partnership. So I wanna thank you to our partner organizations and all of you standing with us today, especially those of you who shepherded the nation leading California versus hate initiative. You were the ones on the ground, in neighborhoods, homes, and office buildings, hearing directly from the people most harmed by hate-fueled violence. And I'm so grateful to all of you, in addition to the Civil Rights Department and your incredible team, for leading and lending your expertise and experience in this most critical partnership. And while we know that surviving a violent hate-fueled attack will impact a person's physical well-being, as was mentioned earlier by Bambi, we cannot forget the trauma victims and witnesses themselves experience that permeate into their very being. Like all trauma, it will have long-term effects unless addressed on a person's mental and physical health, their long-term relationships, their academic success, their job performance, and the overall trajectory of their life. That is why it's so critical that in addition to a safe, anonymous means for reporting hate incidents, California versus hate also ensures that those who report have access to culturally competent mental health resources and support, as well as the legal, financial, and mediation services. My hope is that with this valuable tool, more Californians will feel comfortable reporting hate when they experience it or when they witness a loved one, a neighbor, a colleague, a classmate or a stranger being victimized because of the color of their skin, because of who they love, because of the body that they were born into, where they come from, or the language that they speak. And I'm a firm believer that what binds us is our common humanity. I want us all to remember that we're 99.9% .9 genetically identical. <laughs> And California's diversity is what makes California so vibrant and such a culturally rich state. So there is no room for bigotry and hate here. We all belong here. All of us, we get to call this great state home. So in partnership, in love versus hate, <laughs> and in community always, um, thank you. Thank you all. And now I get to turn it back to Director Kish. Thank you. Thanks everyone so much for being here. I'm going to invite my colleague, Becky Monroe, to join us at the podium to take any questions that you might have. And before I turn it over for questions, I just wanna say that Becky has been a true gift to our department. She has led this work at the national level. She's leading it now in California and she's been a wonderful partner to all of us. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Kevin. And I welcome any questions about this great new resource that we have for people in California. Yes. But I just got here, so I'm sure I missed a good portion and I hope this is not a duplicate question. So I actually have a friend who was a victim of hate right on, that, on the, the stairs by the curbside. About February 1st is when it's happened. And I'm wondering, in terms of legal counsel, where he could go for that? Because I know it's within the DA's territory to help them. Uh, but he does feel like he may need a little more assistance. And Understood. I'm not sure if you would actually recommend that or if sometimes 
the DA may feel insulted if we get additional layer of legal counsel on top of what no. we're getting. I, first, I, I'm I'm really sorry that your friend went through that, and I'm grateful that that your friend has you to support them. I um you know I really appreciate this question because this helps people understand sort of how to use this resource. I would recommend that they call eight three three eight no hate or go to ca versus hate dot org, um, and the whole point of this resource is to let people know what their options are if they're targeted for hate. So your friend may may be unclear whether they want to go to law enforcement. If they do, we can help them do that. In fact, we've already had that experience where somebody wanted some additional support in reaching out to law enforcement. If they don't feel safe yet doing that, then we can do the second part, which is connect them with other resources. So to your point, and as the first partner explained, when someone is targeted for hate, there's a lot of trauma that comes with that, and other resources and support are available. So that's the second piece that we can offer them. And then finally, we are trying to get a better picture of what happens to people when they are targeted for hate and how we can do a better job in California of supporting them. So I would recommend your friend reach out to us and we can help them to understand what their options are. I, um, you know, My experience with district attorneys in this state is that they want more people to report. And part of our goal is to make it easier to do that. So I would recommend that they reach out. We are happy to connect them with the right person, whether they want to pursue criminal charges, they may have civil legal rights, but regardless, come to us. We can help to identify those resources and support. And, um, and again, thank you for being such a, a supportive friend as well. Momentous time and as I give him this resource. And number two, is there a way to get them some financial assistance? The perpetrator is not in a position to, so going after them civilly may not be the route to go. What would you suggest, ma'am? So again, I, um, as a lawyer, you're probably used to hearing us say, it depends. But what I would say is if you reach out to us as a resource, we can help identify what those potential sources of financial support could be. So uh, one of the things that's fantastic about being here in this state is that we have other sister agencies that are committed to this work. So I see my colleagues from the state library here who are giving grants out um, also, the California Department of Social Services, they have a tremendous grant program. All of those grantees are part of our resource network. Uh, and so, and, and finally, what I would say is we also work very closely with the California Victim Compensation Board. So these are all potential resources. And I think what, you know, our goal is to let people know all their options. And what's fantastic is that in partnership with the 2 one network, we're able to give people longstanding care coordination services so we can help them actually connect with people who can help to identify whether there may be resources available. Thank you. Six broken ribs and his wife actually got very bruised all over. So may I please make a suggestion, maybe more security in this part of town, just roving around. I know they said um, a few minutes while they were at Starbucks, they saw those horse mounted and some, some on bikes, but at the moment they needed them, they were sort of nowhere to be found and they really felt helpless. But thank you, I understand thank it you. happens. Thank you. Next question. Oh, right here? Great. Oh, appreciate it. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, just quickly, I know you were just saying, uh, so sorry if it's a little bit repetitive here, but who, who is going to be on the other end of the line? And remind me, and if, um, if you don't have the exact number, don't worry about this, how many languages again? Uh, and But who's on the other line and, and how many languages and what, what can they offer? Absolutely. So if someone calls, we have access, to, they can have access to people who can speak over 200 languages. So we will have language access, we think, for almost anyone who calls in California. And in terms of who will be on the other end of the line, we are very fortunate to be partnering with 211 LA and the 211 statewide network. Now within that network, we have specially trained people who will answer these calls who are both culturally competent, trauma-informed, and will be the first person to pick up that phone. After that happens, if the person wants additional support, they will connect to someone who has even greater training, a care coordinator. And again, this can be provided in over 200 languages if you call, 15 languages if you submit online. Anyone? 
joining us. Okay. Well, uh, we really thank you for, for being here and I wanna turn it back to Director Kish, but um, I just please ask your friends, share this resource. We really do think this can change the lives of Californians and we are really proud to be leading the country and making sure we're providing support. Oh, actually there's one more question. Yeah, I just wanted to ask about tracking progress of this new campaign in the hotline. Will that be publicly available? Thank you. I think we have many different ways that we're trying to hold ourselves accountable. One of the things we recognize is we have to earn the trust of people who have been targeted for hate. So one of the ways we're going to do that is be as transparent as possible with the data that we collect. We're going to share information without any uh, PII. Sorry, I was going, uh, I'm using acronyms without any personally identifiable information. Again, if you don't want to share any information about your name, any of that, you don't have to, but we will share high level data. The other thing I think it's important to note is that when we're talking about sort of sharing this information, holding ourselves accountable, we have a network. Many of the people who are behind me are part of that network who are going to hold ourselves, who are going to hold us accountable. We will be meeting regularly with them and they are going to tell us what we're doing wrong and we are going to do our best to address it and to fix it. So I think we have a commitment not only to being as transparent as possible, but to genuinely letting community members who know, who have earned the trust of people who've been targeted for hate, they are going to make sure that we they are holding us accountable as well. So those are the sort of two major mechanisms, but absolutely we are planning on uh, holding ourselves accountable and adjusting as necessary. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. We're doing... Oh, oh one more? I just had a follow-up question. I think you got a chance to answer it, but um, I know that in the development of this hotline, you worked really closely with community-based organization. What does that partnership look like after the launch of this as this is growing? And of course, we are learning even more about what the needs are too. And so you touched a little bit about it, but yes. just I would love to hear a little bit more about what that community relationship looked like, to what extent community feedback is being incorporated into um, the development of the, the protocols as well. Absolutely. Thank you for that question. I will say we have already gone through multiple iterations based on what we've heard from community. So we are we definitely have a mechanism to get the feedback and to make the changes that are necessary. We um, we have been fortunate not only to receive an extraordinary funding from the state legislature, we also received over $1 million from the federal government, from the Khalid Jabara and Heather Heyer No Hate Act, we're using some of those funds to, to hire someone whose entire role is to work with community-based organizations to make sure we're serving their needs. You know, one of the things we realize is that people may not trust us to call our phone line. We can, you know, we, we have to earn that trust. Until we do, they are gonna go to those community-based organizations that have been fighting racism and discrimination and other forms of hate for, for generations. So that person, their entire job will be to sort of help make sure we're coordinating. We will have regional meetings. We will have quarterly meetings with contractors as well, small community-based organizations that are working with us, including many who are here. Um, I would say API Youth Rising, for example, is a smaller organization. Some of you may have heard about. They will be working with us in this capacity. BYLP, many others as well. So to your point, we have to be able to not only hear it, but make the changes. And we are able to do that because we are only as effective as, as, as is we are able to build the trust of people who need this support. So thank you. Ah, I got another question. Hi, thank you. Um, can you talk about if this is the first statewide hate crime reporting and supporting hotline in the country? And if not, um, what have you learned from other state um, best practices, things like that? That's a really great question. Um, I think we will be the best statewide resource line and network. <laughs> we are not the first, and we have learned so much from our partners. So for example, Oregon started one, and they, um, they weren't as fortunate as we were to have the kinds of resources and support, and yet they have continued to build and do a tremendous job. One of the things they told us is make sure it's accessible, and secondly, make sure you're serving the needs of community-based organizations. You will not get individuals calling, a lot of individuals calling initially. You have to earn that trust. So we took that to heart and they have been continued, you know, they continue to be incredibly supportive. I will say, because we are doing this work and the word is getting out, we're now hearing from other states who are interested in doing what we're doing here. So that's been a really wonderful part of this work is um, 
you know, I, I have worked in the federal government in the past and seeing being in a state where we have the resources, the support and the commitment to genuinely reaching out and supporting the needs of people targeted for hate is, is something I do not take for granted. So we will continue to work with our partners across the country. Uh, and, and I think we're going to continue to strengthen what we do here in our state. Thank you. Yes. I, I don't. I just have a comment, not a question. My name's Allison DeYoung, and I'm the executive director that operates the nonprofit um, that runs yeah. the 211 system for Alameda County. And I just wanted to extend my deep appreciation and thanks to everybody. My staff has been going through some intensive training to start handling the calls for the last several months, and we're very excited um, and grateful. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we, um, we are incredibly fortunate. You have some incredible people across the 2 network. Um, so thank you. Okay. All right. I think, I think that is it. Uh, we, um, we are going to ask folks to stay for a photo, so if we can do that. Uh, and I would also say we have some extraordinary leaders behind us who I think are also available if, if reporters want to talk to them after, um, after the press conference concludes. But thank you. And uh, we hope to hear from you on 8338 No Hate if you or someone you, you know or need support. So thank you.